In our previous class, we had an introduction to the EM algorithm. Today, we would be seeing an application of EM algorithm in R. The application of EM algorithm in R would be used in context to finding the missing values for a univariate normal distribution. So, basically what we would do is we would write a function in R that computes or the mean and the variance for a univariate normal distribution when some of the values are missing. We would write a full function on the EM algorithm, but since it would be a long function, so we would be writing the function not in R per se, but we would be writing it in the slides and then we would be calling that function in R to see what are the outputs. Objective. The objective here is to develop an EM algorithm for univariate normal in R. This code has originally been taken from the given website, but this has been a little bit modified to suit our needs. So, we start by creating a function called em.norm. Now, em.norm is a function and this function takes three things. The first is the vector of inputs of the data and by this, this is denoted by y and this y contains both the observed as well as the missing data. Then we have mit which is the initial value for the mean which the user should provide and we have sit which is the initial value of the standard deviation which the user should provide. What is the objective here? The objective here is to provide or to estimate what is the mean and what is the standard deviation for a univariate normal distribution having some missing observations. So, now comes the body of the function. So, in the body of the function, we have the vector y. So, we first generate two sub vectors. One is y observed that is y obs, which is all those values for which the entry is not any and so this is given as not is dot n a y. So, it gives all the values for which y has a numeric value and y miss are all those observations for which y is n a. And then what do we find? We find n which is the total number of observations for y and r which is the total number of observations which are available. So, that is the length of y observed. Now, we set the initial values and the initial values are m u t and by default the m i t value is passed to the argument m u t and s i t by default the initial value is passed to the initial value of the very uh, the standard deviation is passed to s i. Then what do we have? We define the log likelihood function. So, this is the standard log likelihood function for a univariate normal and this is defined in a function within the function e m dot norm and that is l l which is function y mu sigma square sigma 2 that is the sigma square and n and then we have the definition of the log likelihood. The so, l l is a function which computes the log likelihood for a given mu sigma square and n. Now, after this we compute the log likelihood for the initial value. So, here the mu is replaced by m u t and the sigma square is replaced by s i t. Okay. 
Now we start the E step. So in the E step we have to write two E steps one for E y and one for E y square. So that is E y is sum of y observed plus n minus r into n u t that that is coming from our initial results in the last class in the last session and then E y square is sum of y observed plus n minus r into m u t square plus s i t. Once we have defined E y and E y square, so once the E step is complete we go to the updation step or the or the maximization step which is the m step and then in the maximization step we replace the m u t by m u t 1 or rather we, we have a new value of m u t 1 which is E y by n and S i t 1 is E y square or E y 2 by n minus m u t 1 square. And now we update the parameter values how? By replacing m u t by m u t 1 and S i t by S i t 1. Once these are replaced we can find what is the log likelihood of the current values. So, then that becomes LLT which is LL y observed m u t s i t n and then we can print what is the value of m i m u t, what is the value of s i t, what is the value of LLT and this slash n is for a new line. So, this is kept under the repeat step. So, when this is kept under the repeat step that means that this particularly E step uh, uh, creating the E step and the M step and then updating the parameter values is going on repeatedly till convergence. Then we have to add in some convergence values. So, how do we add in the convergence values? We say that if the, the difference between the previous log likelihood and the present log likelihood that is the absolute value of LLTM 1 minus LLT is less than 0 0.001 then we stop the computation by telling by mentioning here a break. So, if this condition is satisfied that the absolute value of the difference of the two log likelihoods in any two step is less than 0 0.001 then we stop and then we say that the final value of LLT m 1 that is the log likelihood of the previous step is equal to the log likelihood of the next step. Finally, the function returns the computed value of the mean and the variance. So, pardon me because S i t is the variance initially I said that it is the standard deviation, but it is actually the variance that is being calculated. So, standard deviation is nothing but square root of the variance. Now, to run in we can draw a sample and assign some missing values for that we set the seed at any number here we have uh, set it at 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we generate a x or a vector from unknown. So, it is randomly chosen. So, a vector of 20 observations from mean 5 and S t 1 and then we make the last 5 observations to be n a. So, x 16 to 20 is n a. So, if we print x we would get what is the values of x. Once we have the values of x we can find the initial values. Now, purposefully I am taking the initial values as the observed mean and variance. So, now my initial value of the mean comes out to be 4.662 and the variance comes out to be 0.7625157. Note that this initial values are nothing but the observed sample mean 
and the observed sample variance. So, this is equivalent to doing a complete case analysis for the initial values and then we call the function e m dot norm and pass on the x values and the two initial values and we get that these values are 4.6627. So, it converges immediately with 4.6627 as the initial value estimated initial value and 0.7625157 as the estimated value of the variance. And note that this is exactly equal to what we had got in our initial values or we can think in this way that this is exactly equal to the estimates obtained from complete case analysis. See the convergence is immediate because the explicit maximum likelihood estimates for the whole data are those based on complete case and ignoring the missing data mechanism and we use them for the initial estimate. So, there was no repetition at all it converged in the first iteration itself. But to see what the actual iterations are, we can change the values, initial values. So, we can change the initial value of the mean to say arbitrarily to 1 and the variance to be 0 0.1 and these are arbitrary values. So, we can take any value for it. And now, we call em dot norm x 1 and point 0.1. So, that means, we are again calling this function, but this time providing some arbitrary starting value. And once we run the code, we see the output. So, it starts at 3.747 and so that is the initial mean value and then goes on and on for the until convergence. So, at convergence it is 4.662689 and 0.7625643. Now, see that because we had not given the exact initial value. So, if we once again compute what is the mean and the variance from the observed data, we see that it is more or less same up to 3 decimal places for the mean and for the variance it is same up to 4 decimal places indicating that EM is a very effective algorithm in this sort of situations. In our previous class we had an exposition to the what the EM algorithm is. In today's class we did an R function that implements the EM algorithm in context to the univariate normal data. Now, the EM algorithm has three steps. So, we implemented all the three steps namely the expectation step, the maximization step and the updation step of the parameters. We used a function, we wrote a function based on these three steps and then we iterated these three steps until convergence. The initial values were initially taken to be the complete case values and for a univariate normal distribution for with missing data, the EM algorithm matches exactly with the complete case analysis or the, the estimates obtained from the complete case analysis. But we also showed that if we change the initial values, then there is an iteration happening and the EM algorithm converges more or less towards the complete case analysis values. In our subsequent sessions, we would be talking about the properties of EM algorithm. So, what are the properties of EM algorithm? that makes it work in context to a missing data. Also, we would extend the EM algorithm in terms of a mixture distribution problem and we would analyze 
the old faithful geyser data which is a data set in R and see how we can apply EM algorithm for a mixture modeling problem where we need to estimate the parameters.